to speak to you on the subject born gay. Is homosexuality something you're born with? And I want to start out with a scripture. And you're going to see in this message, I will very quickly move away from perversion and start indicting heterosexuals and everyone else, because that's what the scripture does. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, it says, I will break the gaon, the pride of your O's. But here the word O's doesn't just mean power. It means power against God. It means stubbornness. I will break the pride of your stubbornness. Uh, you see, we have this problem. Gimel, Aleph, Vav, Final, Noon. Pride. But the pride is such that um, it's not just that uh, we're gay, but we're act up in your face with a, with a, with a clenched fist gay. Uh, we're we're, we're going to eat from the tree of moral autonomy. And we're going to decide if it's okay to introduce perversion into God's ordained institution of holy matrimony in our black robes. We uh, austere justices. We are going to not only be proud, but we're going to be stubbornly proud. We have the power to say it's okay. So we're going to eat from that tree and we're going to make it okay. That's the sin that we have. You see, when Nicodemus showed up, he thought, look, I'm a nice Jewish boy and I became a rabbi. And so I'll just have a little talk with this guy because he seems to have something that I don't have. He's surely, surely able to do miracles. And immediately Yeshua looks under the veneer of his nice Jewish boy stuff and sees the cauldron of sin. Friend, it's a bubbling cauldron. I, I, I wish I could really explain it to you. Uh, but uh, uh, who, who has words for these things? Friend, who, 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 who can really... Look, when we get into the Bible, we see these disturbing revelations. We're talking about the human condition. First of all, we learn that man is prone to sin. Exodus 32, verse 22. That humankind, as seen from God's point of view, is blindly stubborn. I just gave you the scripture. Numbers 14, 18. And recalcitrant against authority. Exodus 32, 9. So it's not just that the 10, uh, the, uh, the ten uh, uh, spies come back and give an evil report. And say, you know, we can't do it. Those, 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 gi those giants, they're just too tall. Those walls, they're just too high. We can't do it. But then later, when, when you have Korah's rebellion, uh, when, when Moses uh, says, you know, to the, uh, the, the rebels, uh, we, I want you to come to the Ohel Moed, they say, we will not. We, we won't respect your authority. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. Uh, friend, this this is uh, this is bad. And when you get to Numbers chapter sixteen, verse one, you see the genealogy of Korach. Now you might say, "Well, why do we need to read that? Well, what what has that got to do with anything?" Well, you 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 got to get the Orthodox Jewish Bible, or even read it in Yiddish. Get the Orthodox Hasidic Yiddish Bible, and you will see that you start out with. Levi, you know, uh, he's uh, the third son. Uh, uh, and then you have Kehat. And then his son is Yishar. And then the fourth generation, Korak. Now, you might say, well, what has that got to do with any, anything? Well, in Genesis 49, verses 5 to 7, we find out that his father puts a curse on him. And that curse is a generational curse. So you say, well, Junior is not gay, but he was born gay. No, Junior is gay because, among other reasons, his great-grandfather was a whoremonger. You see, look, if you know anything about metal, uh, 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 metal uh, making, you know, th th there can be a, a defect 
in the die in the when the die is is uh, when the when the when the molten metal is put into the mold, you can have a defect, and then you know this defect goes uh, in, in not only into the, into that manufacturer but down through the different uh, times that the foundry is is cranked up. Uh, and friend, what I'm trying to say is that that the warping of the human condition in the beginning it, 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 it gets way out of hand when you see murder and all this chaos that is introduced in the opening chapters of Genesis it just snowballs but here in this in this case you have this rebel this stubborn rebel who will not who will not even he, he, he's, he, he won't even pay any attention to Moses. His, his, his crew that, that is following him, they're, they're all going to uh, refuse to uh, 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 listen. And what happens? What happens? They're, they're destroyed. 250 of them are destroyed immediately. And then the earth opens up and, and destroys the rest of them. This is a picture of sin. Not just the sin that we do, but the sin that we are and, and the generational curses. And, and when you get into numbers, you see that from God's point of view, there's a blindness, there's a stubbornness, there's a recalcitrant uh, rebellion against authority that's built in. No, I'm not going to uh, be a, a man and have children and raise them in, in a godly way. No, I'm going to I'm going to be a transgender, and I'm going to uh, work it out my own way. I'm going to find out what I want to do. Recalcitrant means hard to deal with. It means unyielding, something more ominous. Uh, th th this this is the picture you get in the book of Numbers by Midbar. It turns out that the human condition is more depraved than we had seen in Leviticus, where uh, our corrupt human hearts had come. Uh, had brought forth not only sodomy, Leviticus 18, 22, Leviticus 20, verse 13, but also bestiality, fornication, incest, and all manner of crimes, crimes worthy of death. And this is what Yeshua is looking at this Nicodemus and he's saying, you must be born again. Can you say amen? You must be born again. You must have a new nature, ears to hear, eyes to see. And, uh, and, and if you're going to be a proud rebel uh, and you're going to be uh, arrogant and you're murmuring and rising up in revolt, uh, if you're going to do this, there's a death sentence. Look at Numbers 14, 29. Your corpses shall fall in the meat bar. So here we find out that the wages that sin pays is death. So listen, when you open your eyes in this world, you, you're not aware of the fact that you, and I'm, I'm, t I'm pointing the finger at you, you are your own worst enemy. God has to save you from yourself. Amen. And this self of yours is a cauldron of problems, a cauldron of problems. And, and, and you, don't, you don't say, well, I was born gay. You were born a sinner, friend. You were born a sinner. Uh, don't say something stupid like that. That would be like somebody saying, well, you know, uh, my, the first words that were out of, that came out of my mouth as a very, very tiny child, just out of the crib, was, Daddy, are there any animals in heat in the barnyard? Because, you know, I was just born bestial. I... I had a bestiality, a bestiality problem from the very beginning. So excuse me from all these uh, indictments in the Torah. I was born with this problem. No, friend, you weren't. You were born with the problem of sin. And that problem is going to take you down. So here we have in this country, we have a whole nation of rebels. And, 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 and here they are, defiant, even up to the Supreme Court with this uh, depravity, this, this in-your-face clenched fist that's saying to God, we're going to do it our way. 
holy matrimony will be according to our holiness. Friend, you cannot dictate God's holiness. You, you got to go back to the Torah and look. The, the Kohen Gadol, he's always uh, slaughtering and washing and slaughtering and washing and putting blood here and putting blood there and slaughtering and washing and trying to, to, to uh, uh, keep the contamination out of the camp. But the contamination is, is, is arising from the hearts uh, of, the, of, the, of the very uh, leaders in the camp, and Korah and all of his rebels, and every congregation. It's not long before you have a Korah's, Korah's rebellion. Uh, any, uh, anyone who's been in the ministry very long, if I set them down here to give testimony, they would say, yes, yes, we, 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 did, we did very well for the first three years. Then we had a, what was called a split. Well, who, who did that? Well, we had, we started with the treasure, but this other person joined in, and the next thing you know, uh, the, and, oh, friend, friend, don't you see? It's coming from the heart of man. It's coming from your depraved heart. Don't give me these, these superficial little silly things. Listen, why did the Jews wear tzitzes? Why did they wear them? To remind them it was a kind of knotted ritual fringe. A kind of forget me, K-N-O-T, forget me not. Of all these, of all these uh, warnings, you're dealing with a holy God. You must be, you must be, you must be holy because he is holy. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and you know what? Even if I could touch Mashiach's senses, I could be healed. That, that, that's, that's what was in her mind. That's what was in their mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you realize that he wore senses? Do you realize that all the Messianic believers Wore tzitzes. The men all had tzitzes. Do you realize that these were Orthodox Jews? But I got to, here's the good news. Not only were they born again and delivered from their depravity, but oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah. If you if you go to another passage uh, where you see, uh, you know that uh, they, they they suddenly start speaking in a, 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 a tremendous, miraculous language of prophesying. And, and, uh, and, and there were two who, who were, they weren't, they weren't coming where Moses told them to come, and, but they also spoke in this, in this supernatural way. Hallelujah. And, and, and so Joshua says, look, the, I, got a, I got a tattle on these two guys. They're speaking like this, but but they didn't in, uh, obey your instructions and, and come where you told them to come. And what does Moses say? He says, is this a celebrity thing? Are you jealous for my celebrity? Uh, superstar Moshe, is that what you're saying? Do you think that, that this is about me, Joshua? From, from my standpoint, I wish that every Hasid in Borough Park, every Hasid, in, in Williamsburg, every Satmire had the Ruach HaKodesh of Hashem, that, that Hashem would place His, his Spirit on him, Amen. and that even, even uh, in Kiryat Shoel, they would be prophesying. Hey, listen, Mr. Anti-Missionary out there watching this, understand what we're doing. We're praying for you to receive the mighty Mikvamayim in the Ruach HaKodesh. Hallelujah. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you're only going to be able to hold down the truth and unrighteousness for so long. Everybody stand up right now. Raise your hands right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's come down here to the altar. Praise God. Come down to the altar.